Hey everybody, another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Not too hot out, a little cool this morning, but this afternoon it's nice, the sun's shining, no smoke from the fires. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood, just in the garage here. A little bit of shade, too much glare for the iPad when I'm recording. So today it's about guarding your heart. Guarding your heart and also making some uh, beef vegetable soup a little later on here, so you get a twofer. Um, you know, as Christians, we have to guard our heart. We have to be careful. We, we listen to the Word, we hear the Word, we take in the Word, we meditate on the Word. You know, Jesus and the Holy Spirit enlightens us. But it's, it's more than that. We have to do our part. We also have to watch, be careful of the things that we watch, the stuff that we listen to. Uh, you know, the culture of this world, it's just blood, sex, and violence, right? Movies, TV shows, violence and sex and swearing are just more commonplace. You know, it's contrary to the contrary to the word of God, the, the world of sin, right? We have to be careful of how much of that garbage that we watch, because that's really what it is, right? Um, you know, I don't watch mainstream media. I don't watch the news. Um, it's just it's just all it, it's negative all the time. Even the positive stuff they seem to put a negative spin on things. Uh, in Proverbs 4.20, Proverbs 4.20-23, 20 to 23, it says, Listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you, and pay attention to all that I have to say. For your, fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then, as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. For from there flows the wellspring of life. And it's so true, you know. Like I said, uh, uh, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't live in both worlds. You can't, you can't be a child of God, and you can't indulge the th things of the world because the two just clash, right? You know, um, it's enmity with God to to be to be in the world and try and have a relationship with God at the same time. And. <laughs> Like I said, being careful and, and being mindful, you know, because truly, uh, you know, if you want to know where a person is, just just talk to them, you know, and, and wherever their wherever their thoughts and their hearts lie, that's what's going to come out of their mouth. Um, uh, you know, for me, the same, you know, I'm, I'm growing, I'm learning day by day, little by little, you know, the Holy Spirit teaches me, shows me, you know, scripture passages, just, just beautiful things and you know reminders you know gentle reminders reminding me of things you know watching my language watching the things that I say watching my words you know I, I, I try not to speak negatives um, and you know a negative can really be something as simple as saying well it's never gonna work or I'm never gonna have that or this is never gonna happen to me it happens to others but it never happens to me that, that kind of stuff right you know um, we have to look at things from the kingdom perspective. We have to be positive. You know, we have to be. We have to look at it from a place of victory that we've already won. You know, Jesus took everything to the cross for us, and and it's done. You know, we don't have to struggle. There's no struggle. We don't have to search. We don't have to. We don't have to yearn. We don't have to. You know, all the good works in the world. You know, he just he just loves you because. He does. He loves everybody, you know, and, and it just blows me away every day. I learn a little more and I see a little more and he teaches me a little more about how much he loves me and it's it's unconditional and it's never ending and I don't have to fight for it. I don't have to earn it. I can earn it. He gives it freely. He gives it freely because that's what he does. That's God. He's, he's, he's a loving, kind, generous God, you know, and his love is there for the taking. Anybody who wants it can have it. You know. But getting back to you know the thing at hand in Galatians um, 5, 16 to 25, it says, and this is the New King James Version, it says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do things, you, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. 
Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, self-ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. And what should tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And that's, that's, that's along with the guarding your heart part, walking in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. It's easier to do if you're guarding your heart. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get really any simpler than that. Um, you know, in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, it says, don't continue to, and this is the Passion Translation, don't continue to team up on, with unbelievers in mismatched alliances. For what partnership is there between righteousness and rebellion? Who could mingle light with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What friendship does God's temple have with demons? For indeed, if we are the temple of the living God, just as just as God's, God has said, I will make my home in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. For this reason, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch, not, touch nothing that is unclean, and I will embrace you. I will be a true father to you. And you will be my beloved sons and daughters, says the Lord Yahweh Almighty. You know, I love that passage. I love, love all the passages that I read in the Bible. Um, yeah, you know, oil and water, right? And it doesn't mix. And you know, we're 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 in the world. We're not we're not of the world. Um, you know, because when Jesus came to the earth, you know, sure he, he you know he, he you know he, he ate with sinners and. You know, he, he mingled with the, you know, the unclean and stuff. But, you know, people went away changed when they encountered Jesus. You know, people go away changed now when they encounter Jesus. It's not the other way around. You know, even though he hung out with adulterers and murderers and sinners and drunkards and, and the like, you know, he never went away changed. He was the one who was changing people. We're supposed to be like Jesus. We're supposed to emulate his life. You know, and the, the more we grow in him, the more we become like him. And really, it's, it's you know, we're, we're supposed to go out and, 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 you know, preach the word. You know, there's a lot of lost and hurting people out there that we're supposed to help. Pray for the sick, heal the sick, you know, deliver people from demons, you know, deliver people from bondage. You know, Christ in us and us in him. That's the that's that's the mission, you know, to love to love as Jesus did, and you know, in the Bible, it says there's not enough, there wouldn't be enough room for all the books in the world to document all the miracles that he performed and who was on the earth, right? And you know, the church, you know, we have to be in unity. As Christians, we have to be in unity. You know, there should be no denominations, no Catholics, no Baptists, no Pentecostals, no, whatever, you know, it's just us, it's us and Jesus, and that's it, you know, there's no, there should be no labels, you know, there should be no judgments, there should be no quarrelings, criticizing, you know, because, again, that's, you know, out of, the, out, of the, out of the heart flows the issues of life, right, so, anyway, I think I got one more here from the book of James. Um, James 1, 2 to, 2 to 8. It says, My brethren, brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is double-minded, he is a double-minded man, 
and stable in all his ways. I think that's the biggest thing for a lot of people is, you know, Jesus, Jesus is standing there at the end of your life and he's waiting for you and he's watching you come towards him, right? And, you know, for a while I was on the path and I was just milling about. I wasn't going forward. I wasn't going backwards. I was, you know, there was double mindedness. I wanted to be in both worlds. And, you know, sometimes you have to let things go. You have to let friends go. You have to let people go. You have to let the old life go because the old man is dead, right? You know, we are new creations. 1 Corinthians 5, 17. We are new creations in Christ. Therefore, the old things are dead. And we have to let that go. And that's what I'm learning. Um, he also gave me, and I do believe it was Philippians 4, 9 this morning, if I can find that one. On my handy-dandy Bible app. Um, another revelation he gives to me. Uh, Philippians 4, 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. And that's true. The more, the more, the more I practice, practice what I preach, basically. Um, you know, the closer I draw to Him, and the closer I draw to Him, the closer He draws to me, as I seek Him, and He teaches me, and He shows me, and He gives me revelation knowledge. And he lets me know as a, lets me know of things to come in my life and others, right? Um, he, you know, he, I ask him about people, and you know, this person has this. They're thinking about that. This is their problem, you know. And you know, and Jesus knows all. He can't hide. He can't hide from God, right? There's no place. There's no place on earth. There's no place in the heavens. There's no place under the ground, you know, because He searches men's hearts. And he knows, and he knows, and he loves you. You know, um, he loved Judas. You know, he revealed to me that he knew that Judas was going to betray betray him from the moment he met, probably before that. But he loved him anyway. He loved the man who ultimately betrayed him, that led to his death. You know, that's that's pure love. That's, that's just honest love. And he has that for every person on the face of the earth. Every one of us. Every single one of us. Unconditional, no strings attached, pure and simple love. You know, and it's easy. It's easy to get because all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is say, you know what, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of the struggle. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of striving. I'm tired of competing. I just want your love and I want your peace. You know, it's it's really that simple. It really is. He makes it very simple. Bible study yesterday, Pastor Sam said he makes it simple. It's 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 us as human beings that complicate it. You know, through religion, through works, through you know interpretations of scripture that you know make sense to us. Oh, this would this is this means this because that means I can do that. No, it's you know we need that revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit to teach us and edify us. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna draw closer to him. He wants to draw closer to me, and I'm gonna go start making my dinner, which is some uh, leftover roast beef soup with my jus that we had the other day. Um, it's gonna be a simple recipe. It's soup. You can't really, well, yeah, I guess you can mess soup up, but you really can't mess soup up. Anyway, uh, just remember, Jesus loves you, and we'll talk to you in a bit. All right, we are in the kitchen. I've got a pot going here on some heat, about medium heat. I'm going to put some clarified butter and a little bit of olive oil. Get that little heat up, melt it up for my soup. Um, I've got some... My roast beef. I got some onion, celery, and red pepper chopped up. I'm gonna put some leftover cooked carrots and some leftover cream corn in it. Um, everything's gonna fit on the spoon. Nice small dice. That's a hot pot. Um, I've got my jus from the other day. It's already seasoned, so I don't have to put any herbs in it. Probably won't even have to put any salt in it or anything. 
give that a little bit of a shape. Again, Scott Motto, be prepared. I'll give it a little bit of a stir. Put some pureed garlic in there. Uh, and the reason you cook the vegetables is because it actually changes the flavor of them and it releases the natural oil. As you caramelize the vegetables and you heat them up, it changes the texture and the taste of the oils. They, all, the, all the vegetables have oils in them. And then when you cook them, this way you can smell garlic and the herbs, when you, like rosemary, when you start to roast it, once those oils release, you can really smell it. That's why, because you're releasing all that goodness. So this just changes the, basically changing the chemical composition a little bit. Give it a bit of a different flavor. It's gonna blend nice with the jus and the roast beef. Um, yeah, I'll get this cooked up, throw my stock in there, chop up the roast beef, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I got my vegetables sauteed up nice here. I've cut up roughly about half the roast that was left over. It was quite a just chunk with this vacuum pack and freeze it for sandwiches. Um, it'll be nice and tasty later on. We'll crank up the heat a little bit here. Got my vegetables going. I'm just gonna take my my oops, my jus, my stock, and I'm just gonna pour it right in the pot. And give it some heat here to bring it up to the boil. And I'm gonna take my roast beast that I've chopped up. And I'm just gonna slide that gently so there's no splashing into the pot. Clean up a little later. Uh, I'll put the cream corn in now. I was gonna put the carrots in later, but we'll put everything in and we'll let it all bring it up to a boil and simmer it. Let it all come together. Check the seasoning. Like I said, the seasoning should be okay since everything that's in here has been pre-seasoned, the jus and stuff like that. Um, if anything, we'll add a little bit of salt, pepper, maybe at the end of it. And we'll be back. All right, we got the soup boiling away, simmering away. Tasted it, seasoning is good, smells good, looks good, feels good. We'll turn her off and we're gonna eat beef chunky soup. Leftovers, simple, easy, and tasty. Yeah.